All right, uh, Jeff Schwartz, Fox Sports analyst, former NFL offensive lineman. This guy knows offensive line a lot. And so, first of all, you're in studio. Yes. You and Joel Klatt, I mean, seriously, this this <laughs> island has only two occupants in the last year and a half. So we usually don't talk offensive linemen. I've said I love football, but I don't sit and study it, so I depend on guys like yes. you. And tonight you're hosting Big Boys Club, O-Line Draft Academy. Tonight, 7, I'm going to watch this, 7 Eastern on FS1. Don't be cruddy, because I'm watching. I, I won't be. It is, um, we went out and did a Gruden-style quarterback camp for offensive linemen. So we went to Dallas for four days. We filmed four of the guys there. We came here to do Panay Sewell in Los Angeles. So it's behind the scenes of training, how to prepare. We watched the film, X and O's, whiteboard. We had a big uh, barbecue dinner one night as well. So it's like Gruden quarterback camp, one hour. And then we're going to have digital things like the film and X and O's everywhere. So it's very interesting. Um, reportedly, Joe Burrow in Cincinnati is telling the Bengals, <laughs> draft Jamar Chase. Yes. Reportedly... Justin Herbert with the Chargers is telling them, draft Panay Sewell. Yes. <laughs> Let's talk about him. So he is considered, by the experts, the best left tackle. Do you consider him that? Why or why not? Oh, I definitely do. Here's the thing about Panay. He's a unicorn, okay, because he's only 20 years old, and he'll be 20 the first month of the season. He won the Allen Trophy starting that year at 18 years old. He played Auburn <laughs> oh my God. at AT&T Stadium at 18 years old. And that's what makes him so special. He has so much talent already, and he still is like a kid's body. He's going to grow into a bigger body. He's going to grow into a more physical player, which is already extremely physical. He's, he'll be a better pass protector the older he gets. So that's the, what you get from him. A talented player who's 20 years old. Most guys we get, Quentin Nelson, right, was a senior. Uh, you know, Joe Thomas was an older player. Like all these guys that we get are typically older. He is 20 years old. And you said he'll be a better pass protector um, as he ages and explain that to the audience, not yeah. just because of age, but why? Well, just it's, it's about reps. And in Oregon's offense, previous to, to last year's offense, they didn't really have a lot of drought back pass reps. It wasn't what they did. A lot of screens, a lot of kind of get the ball out quickly. And I think with more opportunity to just practice that and get older. You know, offensive line is a position of practice. You need to rep things out over and over and over again. And he missed last season, right? He, he sat out last year. So I think with more reps, he'll get more comfortable as a pass protector. He's not bad as a pass protector. He has incredible recovery and balance. It's unbelievable. But just more technique work. That's all he needs at that position. By the way, he won the Outland Trophy at 18. Holy. Yeah, the first month of the year. He was 18 years old, then he transitioned to 19. But he played like Derek Brown, Auburn's offensive line, at 18 years old in that, in that opening weekend game in 2019. <laughs> okay, so now there's Rashawn Slater. Yeah. He opted out too. Yes. Very good film on Chase Young. Um, is he better interior or tackle? How do you view him? He is the most ready pass protector at offensive tackle we have right now. You mentioned the Chase Young game. 2019, he played really well. Uh, and, and this is the thing about, you know, people talk about his arm length is short. Watch the game, guys. Watch the game. He kept Chase Young away from his quarterback with his arms. He was fantastic. Very smooth pass sets. Very good independent hands. So one at a time. He's not doing the two-hand punching, not lunging out. But I think he's a tackle all the way. When you watch him in the run game, sometimes his hips and hands don't kind of coordinate with each other. He needs to work on that a little bit. We talk about that on the show. I think he's 100% a tackle, right tackle or left tackle. I would not put him at guard. I don't think he's powerful enough. Panay is powerful enough to play guard. I don't think Slater is, at least now. Maybe he could work on it. But you draft him right now. You put him at tackle. Don't have to worry about it for 12 years. Okay, now Elijah Vera Tucker at USC. I know the program pretty well. Great kid. Yes. Great kid. Um, he was the best guard in the Pac-12. USC has not recruited the O-line particularly well. Yeah. He had to play left tackle and did very well. But in, you played in the NFL yeah. for eight years. In your eyes, is he a left tackle in the NFL? Uh, some people believe he is. I think he is an elite guard, and I would put him at guard right away and make sure that he is that elite guard. He can play tackle. The only concern I had with him was against Oregon last year was the only game he played you know, kind of professional defensive ends. Kayvon Thibodeau, who we'll get into next year, and, and a couple other guys at Oregon, he had, a, he had a tougher game. And that was the first time all year he played against a, a true kind of pro guy. But he's very smooth. But at guard, his recovery is so good, the second level. He, and his, he's so smooth out there. Like, he's, there's no panic in his sets when people, because, you know, they pass the ball so much at USC that he gets a lot of reps in pass pro. Yeah. And they bring a lot of pressure and stuff. So he's practiced a lot of pro things that he will do. I think you put him at guard right now and just be done with it. Put him at guard, whether you're the Vikings at 14, the Giants at 11, or maybe the Chargers, and just put them there and be done with it. 
Yeah, Chargers need a left tackle. Yes. Uh, is there a tackle? Um, and I don't know if we'll have film of them. Uh, Virginia Tech guy I've heard has some red flags. Is there a tackle you're a little weary of? The footwork, injury, there's something that you, you as a guy that's played, yeah. you're just a little weary of them. So Tavon Jenkins from Oklahoma State is not a bad player, but he's really just a right tackle. Like He's kind of too big to play guard and probably not good enough to play left tackles. It puts him in a weird spot in the draft. I know people have mocked him to certain teams, but guys, I think he's just specifically a right tackle. Again, I don't think he's bad, but that's kind of just the one position, which is tough because Slater and Sewell can play two positions. Vera Tucker can get by tackle, but can play guard as well. He's kind of just a one position type of guy. The other guy that is not talked about a lot that could be a lot of value is Walker Little from Stanford. Oh, the, thank you. The, now I know the story yeah. on him. So you know, he hasn't played the last two years. By the way, he was young. Yeah. He went to Stanford. He started at Stanford. True freshman. Yeah. David Shaw doesn't like to start. No. <laughs> He's from Houston. Yeah. Five-star kid. Five-star kid. So remember this name. This kid could end up moving up to the second. Yeah. He may be the most underrated O lineman in the draft. Well, there's no film on him. He hasn't played in two years. He played the first game in 2019, hurt his knee against Northwestern, and then opted out last year with the weird Pac 12 season. So, you know, the potential's there, right? Five star kid, you mentioned Shaw doesn't play a lot of freshmen. He needs to get stronger, more powerful, which you can't tell until he kind of plays. So I know he's worked on it, but he's a guy that you get in the second or third round that probably would have been a top five pick. I mean, he was mocked heading into 2019 as a top five pick. A oh, top five pick, period. Yeah, like like you don't really drop down. It's just injuries. So that concer that concerns me with him. But I think if you get him later in the second or third round, you might get a starter by halfway through the season or next year. If, if you ran the Cincinnati Bengals, <laughs> so they have a center they like, I believe, yes. out of Alabama. They have a left tackle, Jonah Williams. Yes. And those are the two key positions. Nothing against you guards or anything. But, <laughs> um, but, but you want a guy that calls yeah. the audible. Center and left tackle, they're pretty good. They went and acquired a uh, so, so right tackle. Yeah. You could probably get Panay Sewell. Yeah. You could probably go get Slater. Or Joe Burrow says, go get Jamar Chase. If you, as an offensive yeah. lineman, if you ran the Bengals, knowing Burrow has had an injury already, what would you do? I just look at the history of the NFL. Last four years. Those are your last four years. 2017 Eagles, best offensive line in the NFL. 2018 Patriots, dominated with an offensive line in the playoffs. 2019 Chiefs, all pro right tackle, pro bowl left tackle. Bucks last year had three all pro level players. The rookie came in, Worfs played great at right tackle right away. I would make sure my position up front is fixed. And I get the Bengals' argument. The argument is take Chase at five, get a in a deep tackle class or, or guard class, get someone at 38, but you're not guaranteed to get that guy at 38 that you want. You know, they want, let's say, Alex Leatherwood from Alabama. He might not be there at 38. Like, I would solidify the offensive line now. You can put Panay at right tackle or left tackle. Riley Reef, you mentioned him. It's a one year deal. They sign him for one year. They do have a whole right guard as well. I, I just, you can't convince me that a wide receiver is the way to go to build your roster up when you have a first round draft pick like this. Uh, Mac Jones, San Francisco three. What do you make of it? I don't get it. I just, I don't get it. I, it doesn't make sense to me. Um, you know, the argument is this, is that, is that Shanahan has taken, whether him or his dad have taken players with lesser traits at quarterback and made them above average. So I would think to myself, hey, why don't you take a guy with above average traits, Lance and Fields and make them even better, right? The guy taking the lower ceiling guy, doesn't make sense to me. Why would you take a guy with lower traits like to work your off? I, I don't get it. Um, and also, we we've not seen a guy like Mac Jones succeed in the NFL in the last five or six years. Right? Who, who many? Give me an example of a guy who most people strictly agree has, pocket has lower kind of the lower athletic traits as one in the NFL. Who who, who are we looking at? What's the example? We we have plenty of traits, guys. Herbert, right? <laughs> Allen, Mahomes, Watson, even Kyler and Lamar, like all these traits, guys have succeeded in the NFL, the the lower trade guy, I, I haven't seen it. So I don't know why you would trade up for him. Remember, they traded the next two first-round picks. No, it's not just this year. It's the next two years. I wouldn't tie myself to Mac Jones. I don't think he's terrible. By the way, I don't think he's terrible. But the third pick overall, when you have Fields and Lance there, does not make sense to me um, in the way they want to construct their team. You know, um, it's, it's interesting. I've talked to enough people that have said, if a guy is, there's about 15 great players in this draft. Yeah. Like great players. Do you agree with that? Yeah. Most people have said between like 15 to 18 about first round grades. And then you get it into the second, third, fourth round. And there's some GMs that are like, I don't love guys opting out. Now, you tell me, 
if you were a first round pick, would you have played or opted out? How do players view that? I think players view it whatever is the best for them to get paid. You know, and we look at, at the top guys, I don't think it's hurting Chase or Sewell or Slater. Now it's hurting Gregory Rousseau from Miami because he had a bad pro day and you know was overweight. Like if you showed up at your pro day, it's gonna hurt you. But to me, look at the Pac-12 players. Imagine if you're Panay Sewell, right? Or you're Rashawn Slater from the Big Ten. They tell you in August your season's canceled. You're like, all right, well, I'm out of here. I'm gonna get ready for the combine. And then, you know, four weeks later, eight weeks later, like, oh, come on back. And you're like, I've moved on. I'm meant, I'm gone. See, I, I, that's how like, I would have thought. Like, I have no problem. <laughs> I left college early. Why? Because I got a job I thought was as close to the big leagues. Yeah. I got a triple A baseball job. It was nothing against college, but it was like, okay, I don't think I'm, next year I wouldn't get this job. This is the luck. I got a Las Vegas Stars. You yeah. usually end up having to work in like, Yuba City or in Salem, know, Oregon for like the the, the, the right. rookie ball team. So like I told like the opt out thing for me, if I was an elite player, I was like, Yeah, I I I I, and, I get it. And I know that the older NFL people do not like it. I, I know for a fact they don't like it. Um, you know, with Jamar Chase, he could have played a full season, but I get it, man. Like it hasn't hurt his stock at all. Why would you play if you don't have to? You you know, a lot of the players come to the college guys, I'm sorry to tell you, to make money in the NFL. And the quickest path to do that is to sit out this season and get ready to play next year. Plus, he might have known that they weren't going to be as good and he didn't want to play with a new quarterback. And so he just sat out this year and he's going to be in the top five. You know, it's funny about this, Jeff. I was just having this conversation with Doug Gottlieb yesterday. We were talking about the transfer portal. And I said, in my life, <clears throat> people that are just rigid, it's in their DNA. They're rigid. They have one way to live. It never works out well. The transfer portal is a great example. Yeah. So you can look at it and go, oh, my guys are just leaving. The smart coaches have been, or I'm not a great recruiter, but I do run a good program, and I can get three or four guys and solve my issues. Yeah. Like a guy's already played in college at Ole Miss, and I'm at Utah, and I'm like, well, I know he can play college. You have a much lower percentage of a bus risk, a bust rate yeah. transfer portal. And I, and I kind of look at opting out is sort of like the transfer portal. You can, if you're rigid, it drives you crazy because <laughs> we didn't have it yesterday. But I look at the transfer portal and say, God, if I was a program, if I just got a job at Texas Tech football, yeah. we don't have good enough players. I could just be pro player and sign seven guys who don't get to play at Texas or Oklahoma. I'm good next year. Like the, the, the world's changing. I, I, I look at the, like, for instance, guys don't want to play in bowl games. Yeah. Okay. A quarterback I want to play in a bowl game. If I'm a running back at LSU and I've taken a beating for three years and we're like eight and four, I mean, how do you view not playing in bowl games? I think everyone on the team roots for their teammate to get paid. And if the best way to do that is skipping the bowl game, they're all for it. Now, of course, you guys are missing playoff games. They're not missing the Rose Bowl. But if you want to sit the, the, the Vegas Bowl out or the Sun Bowl out, like be my guest. Like I, I don't have a problem because, again, I think players – look at it as rooting for their friends to get paid. But also, you know, it allows a young player to play in a game that possibly couldn't have played in that game in a, in a big bowl game. So I have no problem with that. The transfer portal is so interesting because the old coaches, they, 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 hate, hate, they it. hate it. And they hate it more because they don't want to keep recruiting the players they have. They like the old system where you recruit someone, you bring them in your program, and you're basically done recruiting them. <laughs> now you have to recruit your, your own players on your roster every single day because you know that they might leave if you look at them weird. <laughs> it, it is interesting. So you, um, what, let me see. I'm going to see where you got. You got drafted in round seven. Oh yeah, boy. So were you just on the couch with uh, the it parents? Was a bad, it was a bad day. Why? So that was when we had two days of the draft, right? Rounds one and two, and then the five other rounds. So 2008 draft, ten tackles were taken in the first two rounds. It was like the most they've ever seen that early in the draft. And you weren't one of them. No, I was not. I mean, I knew I wasn't one of them. I knew <laughs> I was like somewhere between like 11 and 15. So I thought, like, okay, great, I'll be drafted much earlier than I thought. I thought four to sixth round. So I wake up in the morning out on the West Coast, 6 a.m. And, and they tell you, don't watch the draft. I didn't watch it the first day, second day, 6 a.m. In front of my couch. Third round goes by. Fourth round goes by. Fifth round goes by. Start getting some calls here and there. Uh, it just, it was a long day. The Panthers called me, picked 241. I think it's Brandon Bean called me, not a general manager of the Bills. And by that point, I was over. I actually had a deal to go as a free agent somewhere. I was like ready to be done because that was 11 picks from the end of the, of the draft. Brandon Bean calls me and says, hey, how do you feel about getting drafted? And I said, at this point, I don't even care. And he said, well, welcome to the Panthers. And I was like, yeah, I got drafted. Like, <laughs> like we, had, we had canceled my party, like canceled my draft party. We had just, we had moved on. Like I, it was, and then the party kind of like restarted up again. But it was at that point, because what happens is the last couple of rounds, 
all these teams start calling you, not to draft you, but to tell, but to make you think they're interested in you, so you sign there as a as a as a free agent. So like teams like, hey, you know, an old line coach from X team, hey man, we're 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 thinking about drafting you here, and they don't draft you, but then they can call you afterward and say, hey man, we we love you. I try to get you drafted. Come sign with me as a priority free agent after the draft. That's how they do it. So I got a bunch of those calls. Like, hey, we're gonna draft you now. Just like be ready. It just didn't happen till the very end. Two pick two forty one. <laughs> That's a, you know, I, I, I thought about this. I would tell my family I don't want to party. Because you knew you were going to be either well, a fifth, sixth, or seventh. Yeah, I mean, I, I knew I, yeah, but, like, it was the first time doing, like, for my brother, we scheduled a party the following day. So we knew, like, if it didn't happen on day two, we would be fine. But, like, we scheduled the same day as the draft. I, I, yeah, it was, yeah, we canceled the whole thing. We turn, turned the whole thing off. And then people just kind of showed up anyways. Yeah, it was... Uh, I wouldn't recommend sitting there watching it. it. It's a bad experience. <laughs> it's not fun to see all these. And I've gone back to Wikipedia and looked at like who's been drafted in front of me. Like he didn't make it. He didn't make it. He didn't make it. I'm petty like that. Well, I don't think that's petty. I think that's. <laughs> I, I love that. Yeah. <laughs> no. I mean, I totally do. I, that. I, don't, I don't think you're alone. I've heard receivers say that. Like I, I, I that guy can't catch the ball. I know. Oh yeah. I keep Talib. I mean, he'll. He, he's you know told me before. I yeah. there's a guy drafted and he, he was a high pick, but he played in a losing program. Yeah, Kansas. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, yeah. It's like I, I, I guarded that guy and shut him down. You guarded him, gave mate catches. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That, that's not petty. That's competent. I like your competitiveness. Oh yeah, I'll go. I'm gonna, you know, after this, I'm gonna go back and look it up again just to see. And you feel good about yourself. At. Oh, I do. Yeah, you don't want to go on TV yes. tonight not feeling good about Exa yourself. Exactly. Yes. Hi everybody! Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from the herd, or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.